I'm a stander. I don't I don't sit. The moment I sit, I look like Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> and so if she's standing next to me, she'll look like Princess Leia in that costume. She looks like Princess Leia anyway. So. Uh, right? Thank All you. The time. Oh, that means something to a Star Wars fan. Thank you. Trust me, that didn't come out of nowhere. <laughs> Let me start with you, Harley. Who's the Colleen in your own life? The person I relate yeah. to. Hmm. If you had to operate a convenience store and, you know, go on a rampage. With somebody in my yeah. life? Um, I feel like Lily Rose would be a good choice. I mean, <laughs> she is my other colleague, and so I feel like, I don't know, we do well together as um, convenience store Canadian clerks. And I know you guys, the, the, this movie was born out of Tusk. How well did you and Lily know each other before you commenced into playing best friends? Uh, we have been best friends since kindergarten. Shut up. <laughs> no, it's true. So uh, we knew did each other quite well. you just tell my kid to <laughs> shut up? <laughs> You can send me a poop emoji. <laughs> Will do. <laughs> so, so it was basically seamless. Yeah. I mean, I would like to hope that we were acting, but we are best friends in real life, so. That is so cool. <laughs> What's your dad like as a director? Well, um, he, I mean. You got to fucking <laughs> come home tonight, so be <laughs> careful when you do this. I have to be careful. Um, no, I mean, he's, he's an ama amazing artist, and it was so much fun to work with him, and he's so, he just makes everybody feel so comfortable and in such a safe environment to try whatever they want with the scenes and everything. So, I mean, it was amazing first experience. <laughs> How much is that? I mean, if it's only a few bucks. It is. Don't even. <laughs> More buck compliment right there. <laughs> Kevin, talk to me about the process of, creating this this film because I know that your daughter and Lily Rose had a small role in Tusk mm -hmm. and then you basically and this is such an homage to Clerks also a little bit I mean it's set in the convenience store so there's obviously a, a bit and she, at one point she echoes a line that the Dante character had in Clerks but the beginning for this to this movie uh, started a long time ago like when I used to bring her to the movies as a kid when we first had a kid I wanted to raise my daughter the way I was raised. My dad didn't like play sports with me and stuff. He's like, look at him, he looks like a football. So instead we went out and did things that were, I don't know, fun for us both. We both love movies. So I was raised in a the movie theater. Once I had a kid, I was like, she's gonna be raised in a the movie theater as well. And so the first movie I took her to was Fight Club. She was about three months old at that point. That is a great kid's movie. It was amazing. Oh, my God. The, the special effects are crazy. She's Pixar really, She's been wanting to work with yeah. Fincher ever since then, man. So uh, she's always gone to the movies with us. And I used to take her to everything I love. So I've taken her to, like, Batman, Superman, Spider-Man, Iron Man. And my wife, uh, Jennifer, was like, this is adorable. You think that she likes those movies as much as you do. I was like, of course, they're amazing. And she's like, no, Kevin, like Iron Man, Batman, Spider-Man, it's all for dudes. There's nothing in there for her. I was like, well, Pepper Potts in Iron Man. She's like, great, he's got a fucking girlfriend. Like, why don't you take her to see Iron Woman, Batwoman, Spider-Woman? I was like, they don't make those. And she goes, well, you're a filmmaker. I was like, barely. And she goes, you should try that. So one day, it took years to sink in. But finally, I was like, oh, my God, that's right. There was no movie for me to take her to see when I was a kid. Lots of movies, but nothing that was kind of specifically aimed at her in the variety like that I like seeing. Comic book movies, but not aimed at tween girls. So I wanted to make Yoga Hosers, which is the movie I wanted to see back when I was a 15-year-old girl. And so it just took me until I was a 46-year-old man to kind of pull it together, man. And the idea of, like, you know, I'm at, before we went into it, I'm not stupid, I've been doing this for like 22 years. The moment I was like, hey, I'm gonna make a movie with my kid, I knew there was a portion of the world that was gonna come out to be like, I can't wait to shit on this. You know, people don't like to see you have a good time. So there was a moment where I was like, maybe I shouldn't do that and shit. Like I was being careerist, going like, I probably won't help my career. But nothing I've ever done has helped my career. I don't know why I even thought for a second like a careerist. Like don't, you know, I, I tend to throw caution out the window. Some people go, decide to guide their careers. I'm just like a guy who's like, this seems fun, let's do this, this seems fun, let's do this. And the idea of like making a movie with my kid, that was never written in the stars. We didn't raise her in that world. We were never like, hey, she was on movie sets, but we were never like, this is what you're gonna do when you grow up, the family business and shit. I was assumed she'd grow up and work at a convenience store. That's what I fucking did and stuff. <laughs> so when she showed interest in, in film, like suddenly it kind of like rekindled my interest in it as well. And to be able to make that movie that I couldn't take her to see when she was a kid, but have her in it, like that's closing the circle in some way. So instead of like letting people be like, don't fucking do that, that's stupid. You know, it's 
people get a minute, right? Like you do anything in life, people get about a minute to react right away, good or bad. And it's always nice when people say good things, you're happy about it. But you got to expect some people to say bad shit. Don't sweat the bad shit. So many people don't really fucking try things in life because we're like, I'm afraid of failure. Like, I stand before you the clown prince of failure. I've been failing for 22 years, and I'm still here. Like, you will always fail. There's no such thing as failure. Failure is success training. You get something right, uh, wrong once, you will never get it wrong again. After that, you'll correct it and correct it. So I sat there going, like, weigh a certainty against a doubt. Like, yeah, some people will come out and be like, fuck you and your movie. But for the rest of my life, I'll have that movie. You guys had the experience. Yeah, and also, like, I'll drop dead one day, probably in, like, ten minutes, and my brain's <laughs> synapses will fire their last, and one of the things I'll think about is, like, holy shit, like, I, we went into the trenches together. Me and the kid made art together. I don't know what happens from here on out, but we always have that, and now she's found her tribe. She's into this performance, and she'll go off and be in way better movies. I know she wants to be in, any, like, every actor on the planet, she wants to be in anything but a Kevin Smith production. Like, she wants to be in somebody's thing where That's she's... not true. It's, don't lie. It is absolutely true. Well, I, was, I still want to be in yours as well. I just would like, <laughs> like to expand I'll my horizon. I'll do your shit, too, but <laughs> I want to rise. Well, Harley, when did you first realize that you wanted to act? Because your dad's right. I mean, I work in news, and you were never one of those kids that was trotted out on red carpets and the precocious cutie pie oh, cast in a sitcom. We trotted her out on red carpets, man. <laughs> when we it? went to the Dogma premiere at Alice Tully Hall back in, like, 99, that was when everyone was, like, up in arms. The Catholics were really mad at that movie. We stepped out of the car with her as a baby, and we put angel wings on her because the movie had angels in it and stuff. And we thought it'd be cute. Look, let's bring the baby to the premiere. A thousand people protesting, saying the rosary out loud, holding up signs like, God is disappointed in you. And I was like, God, so is my wife. So we, uh, <laughs> we went into the theater with, with the kid, and like, you know, people were shouting and stuff. And right before we did the screening, before I went out, I was going to bring her out on stage with me, work her, like, you know, like, here's my kid, show everybody. Like, I just had the kid. Hopefully, you step in front of a crowd with a baby, they don't hate the movie as much. So I brought, I was going to bring the kid out, and Gina Gardini was a publicist at Miramax, and she, you know, we'd had some trouble with the religious right. We're making death threats. We had three, like, legit death threats on the movie and stuff. Had to stop opening our mail for three months. So I'm ready to take the kid out with the angel wings, and Gina Gardini's like, I just want to remind you before you go out there that anybody could buy a ticket for a public exhibition. And I was like, yeah, I know. That's why I sold out. This rocks. And she's like, no, what I'm saying is anybody could buy a ticket to this movie, even people that don't want this movie to happen. And I was like, wait, why are you telling what? me? I'm about to walk out there with my kid. And she was like, I'd feel bad if you went out and something happened and I didn't say something beforehand. So I'm like, oh my Lord, do I leave her here? And then I was like, you know what? You do that, you let the terrorists win. So I went out there, <laughs> I, I went out there with the kid, but I'd be lying if I wasn't, if I didn't say like, I was kind of using her as a human shield as well. <laughs> Just in case people wow. had to and Harley, no. was, and so Harley, was that the moment you decided that you wanted to act? Yes, in that moment, <laughs> that's when I decided. No, um, but in all seriousness, when? How did this come about for you? Yeah, um, I the awakening, so to speak. Yeah, as acting awakening. Um, I did not know that I wanted to act until we actually filmed the scene in Tusk, and I it was so much fun, and I was like, people do this for a job. This is amazing, and. Um, after that, I, I just would think about it all the time, and I was like, I, I want to keep doing this. This is fantastic. <laughs> like, who wouldn't want to spend their time doing this? And um, I just kind of, I got the acting bug after that, so to speak, and I just, I started doing it in school. I didn't used to do it in school for a long time because I had a kind of um, not-so-nice teacher, so I was kind of, like, turned off of it. But then after Tusk, I just started going to classes and stuff and doing it at school, and everything like that, and now I go on auditions all the time and stuff. That's Our family's amazing. not good at manual labor. Like, we've tried, and we're just not good at things. Making pretend for a living, we seem to be okay at. So that I pushed her toward that. I was like, you should do this for a living. This is fun. I kept saying, didn't I say since you were a kid, I was like, you need to do something so that you can leave this bubble that you live in at our house and go into your own bubble and, like, live your world the way you want. So it's nice. It seems like performance is the thing she chose. I would have pushed it toward her, like, you should act. But you don't want to foist that on anybody. they got to discover that themselves. When she discovered it, it, it was, I don't know, it's touching because, like, that's my world. I'm like, oh, my Lord, I can, I can help you in that world. I you can guys, hurt your Do you guys too. talk about movies over dinner? Like, what's dinner like in the Kevin Smith house? I drink milk. 
That's what my dinner is like and said. I, I drink milk a lot and I watch them eat. I'm like, that looks good. <laughs> do we talk about movies? I don't know. Yeah. Do we? I mean, sometimes, yeah. <laughs> You're looking at me like, what do I say? <laughs> say the truth. Do we, I, I, we, I guess we do sometimes. Talk about Suicide Squad. Yeah. Like for fucking years before it happened. I mean, yeah. because, hi, Harley Quinn. With the name and stuff. So when the movie came out, we talked about it at length. And then also, like, she went to see it a couple times. I remember she was adorable. She was like, why don't people like this movie? I was like, oh, my God. Some people in life are just that way and stuff. And I was having to tell her. I was like, it doesn't give a shit if people don't. Don't give a shit if people don't like the movie. Do you like it? That's all that matters, man. It's going to be different strokes for different folks. And I read an interview with you where you said, I mean, your mom is in the movie. Lily Rose's mom is in the movie movie, wife is a producer on the movie, that if you want to make a movie, surround yourself with women. Can you yeah. talk about that a little bit? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, women, are, think about it. Women are, are, they really know a great deal about creation. The only yeah, think? On the, yeah, yeah. Of, of the two of us, you guys know what to do, how to create life on a regular basis. So creating life is difficult. Creating movies is fucking easy. If you have women around who are creative to begin with, like, your job is halfway done. It's a very nurturing environment. So you know, in the beginning of my career, all I knew was dudes. Now, on our production, it, I think it was like 60% of the producing staff all the way down were women, if not, I think actually 75, 80%. So I like to surround myself with that creative vibe and whatnot. And, you know, it's also like, I'm an inclusive guy. I know it sounds weird to say because I'm a middle-aged white man and shit, but I'm going to talk about diversity real quick. The only... <laughs> The only reason I wound up in this business is because when I was a kid, yes, I'm a middle-aged white man now, but when I was a younger white male and stuff, my world wasn't represented out there at all. I didn't see in movies or TV the world that, uh, the, that I came from. I didn't see me or my friends represented. I saw a lot of other people and stuff. And so one day I was like, why them? Why not me? Why can't I tell a story? That's where clerks came from. So I went out there and started talking about my world, which was small. It was like, yeah, dudes who love pop culture and comic books and movies. Um, bromances, they started calling them at one point. So when I started telling my stories about my world, that was because I wanted to see my world represented. Now everybody fucking tells a story about my world. Like, throw a rock, and there's a movie about some idiot won't fucking grow up, loves comic books and stuff. So they're happening everywhere at this point. I'm content. Back in the day, there's nothing for me. Now, not only the stuff I make, but other people's stuff. So now I use the opportunity to remind people, like, Now's the time for you to tell your story. Like, for years, it was very much a sausage fest in movies and stuff. Very rarely do you see enough women in film. So you bring more in, you're going to have better perspective. 51% of the population female. So they know things that I don't know, man. And also, like, on a movie set, as the director or the writer-director, you get a credit for a lot. But anything anyone says over the course of the day, like, you should try this. You're like, ooh, I'll put that in. It happens, it makes it better, you get credit for that sort of thing. I used to like never want to do that. I used to not let the actors ad lib at all in the movies because I was like, no, 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 you save that stuff. I write the dialogue, do my dialogue. Affleck, Ben Affleck, we did Chasing Me, loves to ad lib. Like he loves to button a scene by throwing in a joke that wasn't there, even if it's a serious scene. We were doing a scene in, in Chasing Amy of uh, him and Joey Adams sitting on a swing set, and she's, this is going to be a little off putting, so kids, cover yours. They're talking about fisting. And so uh, she makes a female body part with her hand. I'm so sorry, Harley. <laughs> I, it happens Face so there was like. <laughs> she, she, has, she grew up with this. So anyway, uh, <laughs> so anyway, she, Joey demonstrates it for Ben with her hands, the characters. And Ben's character is like, geez, doesn't that hurt? And she goes, we only do it once in a while. It's reserved for special occasions and stuff. And then I got everything I needed. I'm the editor, so I kind of like, I don't really direct. Most critics will tell you. I just edit the movie in my head as I go along. So I had everything I needed as the editor. I was like, we're wrapping up, kids. We're moving on. Affleck goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. Can we do one more take? I have one more take to do. I was like, really? He goes, yeah, I got, I got some special sauce for your smedicals. And I was like, oh, no, here comes the ad lib. <laughs> I said, dude, I'm good. I don't need anything. He goes, please, let me do it. It'll, it'll get howls. And I was like, all right. Everyone, we're going one more time because Ben feels creative. And so, uh, <laughs> and so we did the same exact scene, same scene. And, you know, she did the thing with her hands. And he goes, Jesus, does not hurt. And she goes, yeah, we, it's, we only do it. Once in a while, it's reserved for special occasions. Then out of nowhere, Affleck goes, what do you do for not so special occasions? Just hit her upside the head with a fucking baseball bat? And I was like, cut? What the fuck was that? Who said that shit? I didn't write that at all. And I went over to him, man, because you go over to the actors between takes, and, you know, you talk about what just happened, and I was going to go over and be like, don't do that shit. And you have never seen anyone more proud in your life. Like... <laughs> Like a puppy who shits on the rug and sits next to it, wagging its tail and stuff. So I was like, what was that all about? He's like, you like that shit? 
And I was like, no, I don't like that shit at all. He's like, leave that in. That's going to get howls. That's hysterical. He goes, that's for my peeps. This was 1996. He had one peep, me. <laughs> so I was like, dude, don't do that. I said, you love, like, ad-libbing and shit, making up dialogue. Like, don't do that shit on my movie. I'm happy with my script. You want to fucking write lines and write funny dialogue? Save it. Put it in your own shit. And he did that, and he won a fucking Oscar. The fucking... <laughs> so... <laughs> I've always been the guy that's like, tell your story. Like, you know, don't worry about the stories of yours that aren't being told. I was that person once. I was like, how come nobody tells stories about me and my friend? They don't put our world up there. And then one day I had a brain snap, you know, where I was like, Kevin, nobody is ever going to tell stories about you and your friends and the shit that you find funny. They don't even know who you are. But even if they did, why would they tell your story? Everyone wants to sing their own song. You want to see something about the world you come from. You want to see a movie about the things you and your friends find funny. Like, make it. That's the only way it's going to happen. So that started my career. Now, every chance I get, I say that to everybody, because I know I'm not, I'm, I'm not in a minority. I've always been the majority. But for that guy who didn't see his world represented in the film, for a little while, I was a minority. And then suddenly, I was like, I'm doing this now. And now, everybody does it. I encourage everybody to do that. Anybody got a story to tell where they're like, nah, they don't make movies like mine. Fuck you. You know what? They don't until you make until yours. Until you make your own Until movie. you step forward. Yeah. They're hungry for that. Now, Harley, were you able were you able to ad lib at all, or did you have to just live in fear of this man? <laughs> and Dad, you can't answer. I'm oh, no, here. Pretend you shut your ears, earmuffs. Yeah. <laughs> no, we lived in complete fear. You and Lily um, Rose were like, ah. <laughs> we were like, oh my god. Um, I mean, this was kind of this was not kind of this was our first acting job yeah. ever. So we at first we actually didn't even know that you could do that, that improving was an option. So it wasn't until other actors were doing it that we were like, what, what are you doing? Like, that's not in the script. What, what do you mean? And they were like, we're, we're just adding on. And we were like, oh, okay. I mean, let's, let's do that as well. <laughs> that looks fun. So um, yeah, besides living in fear that my dad would judge, um, <laughs> we did a little improv. Are you able to watch yourself on screen? Um, I really don't like to watch myself do interviews because I'm in incredibly awkward human being. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I, I'm watching this one; it's going great. Thanks. <laughs> you too. Um, I, I mean, it's cool to see yourself on. I really love to go to screenings and and sit with the audience, so like you can hear different reactions, and it's it's like pretty rewarding to hear people laugh at your jokes. So <laughs> what goes what goes through your head when you see your little girl up there? Um, I've been seeing her up on the screen since she was a kid. Like when, she, when in Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, we made her play baby Silent Bob. So she's standing in front of Quick Stop, sitting. Oh, in a, in Harley. A oh. Yeah. Well, she looked like me. If you just if you burn a cork and draw a beard on her, she kind of looks like a thin version of me and stuff. So we used her in that movie. We used her in, in all the movies. Growing up, we'd pop her in in the background, kind of like a living prop. And the idea was like. When you have a kid, you know, you measure their height on a door, you know, and write it with pencil. It was like a cinematic version of that. Every time we watched one of our movies, we saw, here's baby Harley, here's Harley as a toddler, here's Harley as a tween and stuff like that. So I've seen her on the screen uh, for years. You know, it's always thrilling because I'm like, that actress came out of my balls. So there's like <laughs> something. <laughs> oh, Harley. I love hanging out with you. I take back everything I said about you making me feel comfortable on the set because <laughs> you just ruined it all, so. <laughs> can, I, can, I, can I tell you a story? My daughter hates to impress with me because of this reason, because I'm always like, shut up. Anyway, let me tell you a story. <laughs> she told me, she told, tell her the story that you told Jen, my wife. I call her Jen, obviously. She's your she, mom. About like when you were going to be interviewed by me. Oh, um... <laughs> So at Comic-Con, my dad was on the IMDb boat doing interviews. And me and my dad have been doing press uh, for yoga hosers for a while. And um, I never get to talk, ever. I just, uh, <laughs> I just stand here and smile. So you're, a you're a living prop. I am, like he said, just a living prop to him, not a human <laughs> being. So um, I said when you were a baby, not that now. That seems to be the same now. <laughs> But, um, so he was going to interview me for the IMDb vote while he was the interviewer and I would be the interviewee. So my mom and I made a bet because I went to her and I was like, do you, 
do you think like I will get to answer the questions for the first time? Like my opinions will be in the world? Like this is, this is new. And we've been doing press for like, like maybe half a year, like a long ass time. So like it's, it's been a long time coming. And my mom was like, let's make a bet and see because I bet you money that he will ask you the question and then somehow incorporate the answer within the question and then you'll just like nod and be like yeah you got it dad so um that came true spoiler uh, alert what happened? spoiler watch the interview uh i don't even say that many words and it's uh, just my dad being my dad isn't it well, awesome like people on the internet don't like me and people at home don't like me either <laughs> and they always say the same things would you shut up i'm like all right but you but I thought also, you know, uh, another thing I read that you said that you now make movies for you. Like, you don't care what. But I mean, to be fair, I've yeah. always done that. Like, that's, you know, sometimes you get lucky in the thing you made for you, other people like as well. And that's happy occurrence where, yeah, we're both on the same wavelength. But I've, you know, I've always made movies for me. I mean, if I tried to make movies for other people, it would fall apart. Even the ones I try to make for myself sometimes fall apart. But the idea of trying to please others, I'm more of a masturbatory filmmaker. Like, I got to please myself first, and then hopefully others go, oh, I like this as well. Masturbatory is not necessarily a dirty word. As I just don't want to hear it come out of your mouth anyway. Excellent point. Fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. I love her body language. I love how she just kind of, she'll do, she's like. <laughs> yeah, she's like, I'm trying to get as far away from him as possible. Harley, who do you want to work with next? David Fincher? Uh, I would, I mean, I just want to work. So I'm not like trying to be picky here. Um, I, I have such a craving to work. Like I feel like I may be the most willing actor in the world who is like, I will do any, I mean, not everything, but I will do most Yeah, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> but like. <laughs> Glad I, I'm here to oversee this career. Okay, not everything, but like, I'll, I just want to work, so I'm very eager. Um, but I mean, it would be, I have so many people I would love to work with. Like, I don't, Quentin Tarantino would be a, kind of a dream. Yeah, that wouldn't be little, so bad, would it? Bit of a, <laughs> that'd be a little cool. So, and last question for you guys before we turn it over to our audience Kevin, was it different directing your daughter as opposed to Lily Rose? Um, no, not really. Like, I. We didn't. We rehearsed for about three, four weeks before we hit the set, and the rehearsals were us just reading through the script. And then one day, like I was like, "Let's try it without scripts." But really, it was more about just how to be on a movie set because they had zero experience. So it's like these are the people, these are their roles, and basically like honor everybody from the PAs on all, all the way up, man, because these cats are trying to make you guys look good. So like my. My instruction was more about deportment. They could already act, like I knew that. I saw that in Tuscan, that's why yoga hoses existed. So it wasn't like me going, oh, I can make them act better, not at all, they were very natural. In fact, what can a 45 year old at the time man tell two 16 year old girls about being, how to play teenagers, like do it like this. Like they know exactly how to be teenagers. So for me, it was more about like, this is how you conduct yourself on a, a set, man, so that all these cats understand that you appreciate the fact that you're here and stuff and everybody's there to do a good job. So no, I still haven't, like, I didn't really direct them that much. Like, here's how I direct. Um, I bring, I, I shoot a take, we just shoot one, like, hey, let's get one on wax, see what it looks like. And then I bring the actors over to the monitor after we're done with the take. I'm like, come here, look what you did. And then I show them the take back and that's the easiest way, honestly, they call it monitor directing. Some people don't like it, very dismissive about it. It's fucking monitor directing. But I've been dismissed my whole life, so I don't give a shit. The, the idea of monitor directing is you bring the actor or actress over, your shorthand, no matter what you say, is never gonna communicate like watching the performance communicates. Now, some actors don't like that, they don't like to, like to watch the performance, but most will because who wants to look better on film than an actor or an actress. And if you show them their work, they immediately sit there and cognize what's missing or what they want to well, Soderbergh add. sends dailies every night to his actors so they can... Who does this? Soderbergh. Does he really? Yeah, well, he hasn't made a movie in a while, but when he's he was still king, making movies... He's, yeah, without he literally, that like, he cuts the day scenes and sends an encrypted link, and you can watch what, what, whatever you shot that day. I don't do encrypted links. That sounds very high-tech. But what I do is I'll... <laughs> I come, I'm the editor, so I cut the footage at night, and then I bring the footage in the next day, put it on a laptop, and bring everyone on cast. That's the same around. thing, basically. Because yeah. th that is amazing. Because instantly, mm -hmm. 
everyone's work goes up by 50%. Because otherwise, you don't really see the movie. Like, you work on it, but you don't see the movie until some fucking cast and crew screening or something like that. So when you show your cast and crew the movie as it's taking shape, oh, the work is instantly so much better. Because it's no longer this thing like, yeah, I think it's a movie. They can actually see it coming together. So directing her and Lily Rose, it was kind of the same thing. I'd bring them over. I'd be like, come here, watch. And nobody wants to look better than a teenage girl. So the two of them would sit there and watch the entire take back, cognize the things they wanted to change, and then be like, okay, and just head off and do it themselves. So yeah, I can't even like take credit for the work. What I can take credit for is like, you know, I wrote the script, if that counts. And, and the idea of going, I think these two are clever. I think they're funny. I think they could work together oh, in Tusk and then blowing it up to Yoga Hoosiers. You guys really, like, I mean, it's hard to believe that it's your first movie. Thank you. Very, very so hard nice. to believe. To our audience, please, ask Kevin anything, but not Harley. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> if you do ask me, though, he'll answer for you. So don't. Well, then uh, my question is for apparently Kevin. <laughs> um, no, uh, I'm sorry. Just let me get this out. Uh, my name's Michael. Um, I'm a veteran. Uh, Thank I you for your service, sir. Everyone, put it together for the veteran, man. You're very welcome. <laughs> uh, Thank you guys. I do appreciate it. Um, actually, I, w I went to the Army to pay for acting school. Um, didn't have a comic book collection to sell. Any Kevin Smith fans in the house? Yes. Anyway, so uh, yes, so now I go to Lee Strasberg here in NYC. And I was just wondering what you look for in up and coming actors and how you find your talent. And if I ever got in the audition room with you, what you would be looking for. I'm sorry, so. I'm looking for a relative, obviously. I. Uh, I uh, <laughs> She, she's already uh, got she's already <laughs> got a boyfriend that you like, so I'm screwed there. The <laughs> um, here here's what I'm looking for. Uh, number one, like some people like hiring your kid, that's nepotism. Well, like of course it is, but that movie was not going to exist without the kid. So it's not like an actor or an actress lost the job because I'm like, ooh, I'm going to hire somebody close to home. She created the movie by her performance. What I look for when I get into a room for young actors, old actors, don't matter what it is is authenticity and naturalism. I just like people sound like they're not acting. Um, that's, that's the trick of acting, as you know, is to sound like it's not performance. In terms of like how you get into a room with me, I'm very easy. I'm a matter of timing. If you're in the right place in the right time, no, it's true. Um, you just have to pay attention to the social media. Like on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, I'll put up when we're shooting something and when we need extras. That's the best way to do it. You just have to be around me, man. You prove yourself useful, I pull you into my world as quickly as possible. But I always like to employ folks that just like movies, because I was, and still am, a guy that just liked movies, man. And I never, I didn't know the process before, you know, uh, DVDs and stuff like that. They didn't show you behind the scenes that much and stuff. So I'm always happy to bring people in just to either educate them or involve them. Um, some people like to be on camera like yourself. Some people just are curious and just want to watch from the background and stuff. So I'll put up notices for that sort of thing. Sometimes we put up notices for auditions or for background actors and stuff. But if you follow my social media, man, I, I've done that since, like, Chasing Amy, I think, was the first movie. Like, all the people in the Comic-Con, those were just people from the, from the website. They were just fans. That's awesome. And I, our, we have one final question. If that'd we be mind. the way to do it, my friend. And thank you for the, your service to the country. Hi, um, so I'm a parent, so I love the way you both handled that troll on Instagram, which was great. Thank and, you. And uh, my question is for Kevin, you know, I get excited when I hear you're directing an episode of The Flash or whatnot. Which DC character that, that is or isn't on, on, the, on the network would you want to direct next? And then Harley, which show would you want to be in? Uh, the question. I think uh, I would love to see the question. Is a DC Comics character came from Charlton years ago. Kind of like uh, uh, Rorschach, if you know the world of the Watchmen. Um, he's a guy who puts this pseudoderm on his face, Vic Sage, and he releases this gas from his belt that seals the pseudoderm to his face so he has no features, no eyes, no nose holes, no mouth, no ear holes. And I think that's like a terrifying image. Like all these superheroes, if you were doing something bad and Batman showed up behind you and you turned around and you're like, this guy's dressed like a fucking bat. But if you turned around and saw a dude with no features on his face and he was trying to stop you from doing what you do, you'd probably just kill yourself out of terror, man. Like, holy shit. So I think that would be cool. That's a visually interesting thing. You can pull that off real easy now with CG, just erase people's ears, nose, and eyes, or just try to put like a mask on. I think that'd be a little more difficult. But I think that would be a, a cool idea for a show. But I, hopefully they'll get there. But if not, I don't give a shit. I love The Flash. That's my religion. Flash and Supergirl, big time. And what about you, Harley? 
Um, I recently started watching Supergirl also, and it's like my absolute favorite. I cry and I laugh when I watch it. Um, I would love to play any villain on Supergirl. I think that would be the most fun part to play because playing someone so opposite from yourself, I would like to think I'm not a villain, so I think it would be so much fun to play. I don't know, after some of the shit you said today, <laughs> you're a villain to me, my friend. And guys, when, does, when does Yoga Hosers open? Yoga Hosers open September 2nd everywhere, but on August 30th, they're doing a Fathom in-theater event where if you go see the movie, there's an intro, uh, a 30-minute, 30 35-minute intro about how the movie came to be that happens before it that we shot at an earlier screening, and then the movie plays after that. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.